All right, everybody, we are on our way home from vacation in Wyoming, and we are coming up on a tornado right on the Kansas-Colorado border. I think we're about five miles away from it. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Today's video, as you saw before the intro there, um, we're going to show you guys a tornado that we saw on the way home uh, from vacation, which um, I'm going to include about six, seven minutes of in this video, because uh, that's what I've been doing for the last week as I've been on vacation. Uh, but at the end of this video is some farming content where uh, Nathan filmed some things while I was gone. So if you don't want to hear about my vacation or you don't want to see the tornado, you can skip ahead to like the nine minute mark or something and uh, you'll get to see Nathan farm for the last half of the video. Um, but just a little update for you guys. It's It's been a, a couple weeks since we really did any videos. There's not a ton going on on the farm in middle of July and so uh, it's a good time to take a vacation. So that's why I uh, left and you saw in the last video, Nathan went to the lake for a while. Uh, Kendall and Kaylin are planning on going vacation here in a couple weeks too. Talked a little bit a couple videos ago about how the crops were in danger of burning up because we had two weeks of 100 degrees. I was probably being a little dramatic uh, in that video. Nathan kind of got on me. He's like, Greg, the crops are going to be just fine. We go through two weeks of 100 plus every year. So, sorry I was a little dramatic. The crops are doing just fine. Um, it's, it's July 27th today, I think. You can see the soybeans behind me still look just fine they don't they don't even hardly look drought stressed we did get a quarter inch of rain uh that i think have perked them up a little bit i mean they're they're dry the ground is dry we haven't had any rain since july 2nd other than that quarter inch so um, we're needing some rain we got a chance uh the upcoming week um, but it has been very hot the last couple of weeks that is pretty much the story of the last couple of weeks um i would say probably 17 out of 20 days have been over 100. Today's really nice because it rained last night, um, just in the 80s today, so um, that feels good. And uh, it was a good good week to go on vacation um, just because it was so hot and there wasn't a whole lot to do on the farm. So uh, my wife and I and our daughter Brighton, uh, we went and it was kind of a work trip along with vacation. So in, in the following video, you'll see we do three different uh, speaking events where I, I perform and, and talk to crowds three different locations in uh, Nebraska, South Dakota. And then my wife and I went to Cheyenne Frontier Days and uh, we also got to go see Walker and Laura and they went to Cheyenne Frontier Days with us uh, for part of it. So a lot of fun, but uh, as you saw at the beginning of the video, we had a surprise on the way home, right as we were crossing back into Kansas um, on the Colorado side, there was a, a pretty decent tornado. There was actually two tornadoes we found out later. Um, so glad the tornadoes didn't hit here, but we, are praying for some some storms we need we need rain um the beans as you can see behind me look amazing it's amazing how today's bean genetics and, and corn genetics these plants know how to survive hot dry weather uh here in kansas so um you never used to could do this and have a july like we've had um but it's it's pretty cool to see so we're excited about the crops but we need a rain hope you guys enjoy the following uh footage from our vacation and, uh, and then you'll get to see Nathan later in the video. You're so high up. Where are you going? Where, Where you do going? you think you're going? Boy, that fin looks fun. You having fun? Okay. Yeah. Is it fun? Hi, Brighton. Farm. 
I would sell Ford Charmster, Pasture Road, that's a cool one. Some cows, tractor stuff. Net wrap, farmer style, crazy green. All I do is farm. All right, almost to the end here. I'm so farmer, bail, Anthony. All right, perfect. Thank you guys. Hello. Closer and more impressive than the first one I ever saw. My heart's racing. 
just looking at it. So there's a bunch of us uh, pulled over on the interstate here. No one's getting any closer than this. You can hear the uh, you can hear the tornado siren going off in the town. All right, so we moved up about a quarter mile, and when we were on the other side of this interstate exchange, it looked like we were just, it looked like it was hitting this town right here, but I think it's probably four or five miles away. But I mean, I think we're safe, safe right here. I'm no storm chaser, so I don't want to get too close, but this is definitely the closest I have ever been, and it's just beautiful. There's hardly any, uh, there's hardly any people out here, so. I mean, I guess that's good news, but there's still definitely farmsteads in this vicinity. You can see it's picking up all sorts of dust. It's kind of dissipating now, maybe. Wow. Look at this semi. Look at this semi driver, no fear. He's like, oh, it already crossed the interstate, I'm good. It's kind of going back into the sky, but that was, that was amazing. Blue skies over here. Well, this is where we think the tornado probably hit across the interstate, but because it's Eastern Colorado, there's not much out here to begin with. So probably no damage, but uh, it's quite the sight to see. It was. You can it's... see piles of hail <laughs> over here along the interstate. And look at the ditches. I mean, they must have gotten. Yeah. Oh, here's where the tornado hit. Look, look, look. Look at the corn. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, just to follow up from uh, seeing that tornado. Um, it was awesome. I, I loved it. I, I, I am a storm chaser at heart, but I don't I don't trust my uh, my knowledge or skills enough to get any closer than I did, um, you know, a couple miles away. Um, they are dangerous. I mean, if you get close enough to a, to a tornado, you are putting yourself at risk of, of injury or death. So so I was careful, especially because I had my wife and kid with me. We actually had uh, my father-in-law. He was watching the TV at home um, and, and kind of giving us the mile markers of, of where we, we needed not to be. So um, we had pretty good information and uh, you know there were cars right next to us. Um, so for all of you who are maybe gonna comment that I wasn't being safe, I, I felt like I knew what I was doing. Uh, but at the same time, it's a rush. It's an adrenaline rush to see a tornado in person. Um, thankfully, it was not coming at me. It was going a different direction and it was not close to our farm either. I think I'd be a lot more nervous if a tornado was was coming right right at me here on our farm. So anyway, the next footage you'll see is uh, Nathan uh, working working on the farm with irrigation and, and baling hay. So enjoy. So I'm getting ready to start the uh, irrigation pivot. And I uh, was just looking at the corn. And it's right in roasting ear stage. So, and this was our last planted corn field, so this field we should, you know, it's all pollinated. It got got nicely, real nicely pollinated, uh, but kind of before the heat, I would say. Uh, some of the other corn, you know, got pollinated, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be out of water to uh, fill really well, barring a uh, late pop-up rain shower that the forecast is not saying. Um, but it, it'll make something and, and, uh, it'll make good silage where we chop and then, um, you know, what we leave for grain should make a good crop. And then this irrigated should make, uh, really pretty good. So we'll just keep, keep getting water to it to help it finish out. I'm out here on this nice morning raking up our, uh, millet hay. This really hot, dry weather is has dried it out pretty well so we're 
fluffing it up. I think Dad just wants to go ahead and bale it all, which it almost seems like it could dry a little more being fluffed up, but it's pretty dry. Dad actually just finished up swathing the alfalfa, which is right next to it. It's a pretty small cutting because of that heat just slowed down that alfalfa, but uh, he he cut most of it yesterday and then finished up this morning, and then he's gonna hook onto the baler. So nice big windrow. See Dad unhooking from the swather, getting ready to hook onto the baler. And uh, I brought the truck to take some bales home. All right, Dad got the baler hooked up, and then he said he wanted to rake, so I'm gonna let him rake. We got a nice tight bale. Uh, it actually did pick up some moisture last night. We've still been having cool nights, even with these really hot days, uh, which is a very good thing for the corn and soybeans and milo. Um, but it's kind of no rush, but I'm, I'm at least gonna bail off these ends for the rake, and then we might leave, leave this fluffed up and and wait till uh, this evening or something to bale the rest of it. Uh, just cause with millet or sedan, these thicker stemmed grasses, especially when it's 100 degrees, you might as well get them real nice and dry. Although yesterday, dad said the leaves were so crispy he thought it might be too dry. So it's kind of a balancing act, but fluffing them up will, will for sure get what moisture is left out of there so all right dad got dad got done raking up there he's gonna put on the bale forks and we're gonna haul a load home so i i already have almost a semi load so we'll we'll get at least a semi load load up take it home and maybe come home or come back and do the rest but i don't know it it seems to be bailing up pretty nice it's gonna make some really nice speed it's kind of nice to do some uh hay work. I, I don't think I've done like any hay stuff uh, since uh, the first cutting of alfalfa because generally I'm um, when we have all the planting and spraying going on generally I'm doing something like that. Finish the curriculum. So uh, it's nice to give this baler a good workout actually. Uh, we've had light alfalfa all year and uh, we had light straw and behind the wheat but this millet you can see we're we're kicking out bales pretty fast so I just dumped one I don't know how fast I'll be able to go while holding a phone but that's a big windrow that she's eating right up and uh, you can sure watch that bar climb <laughs> And then as soon as it, when it reaches that 90% it beeps, I gotta be ready to stop because uh, it really fills up fast. So that's, uh, that's the way to make hay. So by the time I get stopped, ding. I don't know how many seconds that was, probably about 30 seconds. Should be a good hay crop. So I uh, ran out of net wrap. I figured I should show you guys. Just opens up, slides on here. Okay, I need, see I need both hands to take those things off and unless, oh, never mind. So you can slide it on there and then just slide everything off. Then I just string it through here real quick and I'll be back going. Pick up this trash and store it there on the side of the baler here where we stored the full one. Gotta hop out of the baler and help dad. Oh, is he going back there? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Help dad pick up the bales. When we get this semi full, we'll head home and someone else can just drive a pickup over here and finish this. In fact, we might finish it while someone's raking that alfalfa because I'm thinking that alfalfa's only gonna need a couple days of this heat to dry. Pretty 
fast picking up bales when they're all so close together and you have a tractor driver and a truck driver. Better pull up for him. used to the camera slowing things down by now. So before I go home for lunch, I am going to uh, shut down this pump. We didn't have either one running on Saturday, Sunday, so then we kind of ran them, ran the two corn pivots uh, just kind of solid for a couple days. I think we're kind of caught up. It's hard to be caught up when it's 100 degrees. I mean, that corn just kind of takes all it can, but we're a lot more efficient if we pump at night and in the morning and shut it off for kind of the hot afternoon hours. So that's what we're gonna do here the next couple days when it's gonna be 105. Uh, the cool nights, we've still been having cool nights and uh, and this, this water, you know, you're probably getting 95% of it to the, to the roots at night and in the mornings. We're in the afternoon when there's so much uh, evaporation uh, then you're probably only getting like 80% of your water. We're gonna try to make the most of the, the water we got and um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Well, our cattle lagoon is empty, so we'll be moving this pump uh, over to our other pond and get some more irrigation water off of that. And uh, this lagoon didn't fill, didn't even get close to full this year, but um, that's how a lagoon's supposed to work. It's not really supposed to fill up, and so it's good to have it empty and be able to. Uh, catch all our feedlot water. I can't film while I'm driving up out of the lagoon because I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Dad's helping me, but he's not much of a film uh, photographer. That's not the right one. Come on. Alright, we got her back down engine running. Uh, because of the angle here, it's actually in the water a little, but we'll get that pumped down and it'll be good. Should prime real easy like that. So we're gonna get it running again. Can't really even keep up when it's over 100 degrees every day. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, some random content again, but uh, it's kind of this time of year. And uh, please remember to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us any questions. Another thing that happened while we were on vacation is our contractor finally got our porch done. We were waiting on some, some uh, supplies for that. Uh, but it's done. We're excited to use it. And it was fun to come home to uh, after our vacation. Thanks for watching, everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website, www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.